Well, good morning, folks. Let's go visit Captain Dave's Sport Fishing. Let's see if he's home. Let's see if the Jetty Wolf is home. Well, this must be the right place. He's got his name on the door. Anybody home? Hey, I'm here for a visit. Nice to see you. Let me open the door for you. Get a little uh, air going in here. Well, I'm glad you could stop by. Yeah, I've done a lot of work in here lately. You know, because the wind's blowing so bad and everything. I'd say in the last week, I built this entire workbench, me and my dad. It ain't going nowhere. This baby is so rock solid. Here's the rest of my morning coffee. So, uh, what brings you... What brings you around so early? Well, you know, I'm just like you. The wind's blowing and I've got nothing else to do. So I figured I'd come on over to the Jetty Wolf Fish Camp and see how you're doing. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, so lately I built this workbench. My old workbench was almost falling down. Remounted the grinder. Remounted the old beat up vise. Hung a light. Me and Orwalk. You know, a regular viewer slash commenter. We got together and I had him make this wood disc for me because uh, he could probably use one himself. And, you know, this is for honing knife blades. You put some uh, compound on it. Here's some compound. We're also going to try and I might pick up some uh, valve grinding compound. Me and old Orwalk talked about that. But what you do here is you just, I just pull out, which I can't remember which one, but I just pull out one of these bolts and I flip it around. I'm not going to do it right now. And it spins around because you don't want this coming at you when you're doing a knife. You want it going away from you. And, uh, you know, put the shop lights up. It was awful dark in here. Let's see what else. Uh, this was always dark, so I mounted another shop light to look in my cabinets here and all that. Good old junky cabinets full of everything in the world. Even did this, put a shop light over the welding table. And you're probably looking at a welding cart here with a bottle of argon. And there ain't no welder. Well, that is true. This was the welder. It was like uh, me and my dad split this. Uh, we we got this Eastwood. We had an Eastwood before this, but the Eastwood we had before this wasn't a multifaceted machine. It was just a TIG, TIG MIG. This is an Eastwood Elite. This does stick, TIG, and MIG. And uh, got this nice table, got everything we need. Got a spool gun for doing uh, my al aluminum. Argon gas comes out of that nozzle. Got a welding clamps, our hood. Got a nice chair just to sit here and practice. But we're on like our fifth welder by now because even this one sent it back yesterday because uh, the argon that goes into the back of the machine was leaking. And I'm running out of my bottle here, which is 40 bucks to fill that up and 25 miles away from my ha damn house to get it filled. So uh, the argon came in the back here. And then of course you plug in whatever you're gonna plug in when you're using it. We come to find out that uh, the easiest way to, to do steel is with the torch that comes with it and use flux core so we got the flux core and then this i'm using to practice with aluminum 
And that's pretty much it. That's what I've been doing. Because the wind's blowing every day. Every day the wind seems to be blowing. I was out yesterday. I took this with me. Let me turn it around because so it's all straight. This is my uh, newest find here is my Daiwa beef stick. And I got... Let me get this real cover off. I got my Daiwa Ryoga jigging on it. Bay jigging. If you don't cover your reels, you know, you're really not helping yourself. You should cover your reels. Yeah, I can see where reel, reel covers like these come in really handy. So, I mean, that really keeps the sun and the salt off of your reels, Dave? Yeah, sure does. Keeps the sun and everything from uh, messing up your braid and uh, UV and the hell out of it and keeps the salt off your reels. Keep it covers on on my reels like this saves me an extra six months of use without having to break down my reels and and clean them all the time. Don't you have a uh, don't you have a video about reel covers and how it saves you time and money and everything and on your line and all? Yeah, I sure do. I've got all kinds of reel covers. I've got an entire fish basket full of them. I just find them on eBay, but the here is the kicker. You've got to make sure you always get right hand covers, if you got a right hand reel, and the sizes can be kind of tough. I had to experiment around. I'll put a link in this video description that you're making here. So uh, I'll give you the link so you can see where I get them on eBay. Well, geez, thanks, Dave. That would be a great thing to put in the video description so people can save money and save their braid and save their reels. Yep, they sure do come in handy. So this is actually for a low-profile teardrop shape reel, but it fits that Ryoga perfectly. Here's a little closer <clears throat> look since I can't get out and fish. Today is going to be 20 to 25 knots, they claim. And yesterday at the jetties, oh, it was heinous. Me and Mike and Brandon, his son, we took a ride out there because we planned on doing a charter and catching bull reds on the south side of the south jetty, but it was it was heinous. So we're going to try it next week. I never got to try out my Daiwa beef stick. Uh, just in the meantime, besides building a workbench, sending my welder back, installing shop lights, I also made about 50 of my strong arm rigs. There's my strong arm right there, ready to be deployed. See, I got uh, my hook hanger here. So there's the 100% uh, strong arm. When I did a video last, it was all about the strong arm and I gave a little teaser. And then I put a link in, in the video for uh, the video that I did where I went into in-depth explanation. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that little video you did where you're sitting in, in the wolf den and you were quickly making up one of these. Looks like you can make one of these in four minutes or less. Yeah, I read a lot of the comments. Uh, some people don't like those videos where you don't talk. And some didn't like the quickness of this. Some people didn't really realize it was just a teaser video because I know you didn't want to rehash and do a whole nother video about the strong arm because the original video has, I think, 27,000 views that I saw. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I didn't want to rehash how to build the entire thing. So in the end, in that video that I made, it was just a teaser. I put links to the major video where I go through this A to Z. But here it is again. You got your Duloc snap. I believe that's a number four. I uh, might have these numbers all a little off. Um, then I got a cross line 
meaning it's straight with a hanger. That's the only kind of swivel that you can use. And if you look at it closely, it shows right here how I take the uh, mason and I loop it through. And then I put a double sleeve crimp on it. That's what gives it its integrity to hold it out. And there's about how long I make it. So hopefully everybody can see this. Then I go to a good, strong, quality swivel. And then this is about how long my leader will be. A 40 sacrificial. There's a little one-aught must-add hook. Believe it or not, that's brought in 25 and 30 pound redfish. No problem. Because they ate our shrimp while we were trying to catch whiting. And then, of course, these don't have these Daiwas, which is my newest find, which is, I, I really hope I'm going to be super happy with these. There's the flat spot on the Daiwa beef stick for your thumb. Non-trigger. And then, of course, I add one of my zip tie with a hole in it i call them bulkhead hangers because uh they don't have a hook hanger on these nice metal accents really nice rod actually when it gets down to the details of it this is much more fancy and nicer than an ugly stick there's the diowa in there Got a little metal band here with the cork. All fancy stuff. I always say I'm nothing fancy. But I am very pleased with these re, uh, with these rods. Yeah, I know. When I saw you do that video of them, I was like, man, he is really going against the grain this time. I understood immediately what you said when you said you're a backslider. You're backsliding. You were, get, you were not talking about ugly sticks. Which, that's all you ever do is talk about ugly sticks. But I know, I know you're a big fan of Daiwa. How many of these Ryogas do you have now? What's the total? Oh, I think I have, uh, I think I got a dozen. They're getting a little tougher to find now because now Daiwa came out with uh, the black ones. The really expensive black ones for the bass dudes. They're uh, kind of remarketing them again. They're trying it again. Here's my connection. What I do is I always put on a, a sacrificial leader, hopefully. It's sacrificial. This is 40 of mono. And uh, I do a, uh, I guess you can call that a uni knot, uni to uni or something. But the difference is, is also, let me pull this out. I do that uni to uni. Let's see if I can show you here. With a double line. With a double line. And down here, if I push the button, there's the double. And then what I do right here is another video that I have where I use the... It's nothing fancy. Believe me, it's nothing fancy. But... I use my Daiwa Soku, Soku, Soku knot tool, and that makes this really super fast to make. It's just a way of doing like a, I don't know, a surgeon's knot or something for double lines. So I use my Soku knot tool. That's what makes that knot really fast. So yeah, I'm very, very, very pleased with these. I only wish I could get out and fish them hard. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That wind is just so incessant. Oh my gosh, I look at the marine forecast all the time. Not the Walmart, like you always say. I don't want to look at the Walmart uh, west side of Jacksonville, you know, forecast. Why, why would we care about the west side of Jacksonville? We want to look at the marine forecast out to 20 miles, right? Yeah, you sure do. You want to look at the uh, out to 20 miles. Because that's going to give you the um, that's going to give you the real deal, what the forecast is, not 
not some, you know, Walmart parking lot on the west side of Jacksonville. So, like, what else have you been doing since the wind's been blowing every day? Besides a workbench, installing lights in your shop, sending back your welder, practicing welding with your spool gun? I mean, I can tell that probably takes a lot of time. Yeah, it does. It sure does. Well, let me show you what else I've been doing. Out here under the boat, I, uh, night lights, LED. I only used to have one, and now I'm running doubles out here at night. Um, over here at the house, I've always had these spotlights full of, uh, you know, what do you call them? Mud daubers and all them crap. And I dug them, I dug out the mud daubers under the eave here, and I got an LED here that's a big night light, you know, for possible aiming better at, intru at intruders that come to the house. I can aim right out this window, and if they're in the light right here, they're a goner. And what else have I done? Well, I also added a major LED up there. I already had this one and I did a video about these lights at the same time when I did a video talking about how there's a special paint that you can paint all that plastic stuff on your truck or your car. That paint was great. And I also talked about these big LED, what they call deformable lights, meaning you can bend them around. Let's go get up in the boat and I'll show you a little closer. Yeah, it's a lot brighter up in here now. You just added that light? Yeah, I added this light right here yesterday. It's another one of those deformables where you got these big blades on them. It kind of looks like a fan. And you can point these LEDs around. So I mounted that fixture there yesterday next to, of course, my pull-down cord. Because of the top, I couldn't mount another one up there. Because, of course, it wouldn't shine. So now... When it's really dark in here, I get a lot of light right here at my console and up in the bow, which was always lacking. This is one of those deformable lights right here. And it really shines some good light here in the back of the boat. You know, if I do say so myself, you sure do have the ultimate place to park your boat. You got electric, you got lights, you got water. I mean, what could be any better? Well, I'll tell you what could be a lot better is if it wasn't such a pain in the butt to pull down the street and then back in. Sometimes the light isn't right and it's without driving on my across the street with the black house. He painted his house black. I have no earthly idea why, but um, backing in here is a real pain. You know, my true dream is to have a giant steel building with an apartment on one side and a drive-through barn that's like 20, 30 feet high and big garage doors where I drive in with the boat and the truck and everything and just park it in there. Get out, walk through a door and have an, a, an apartment on one side. Real simple efficiency apartment. Bathroom, shower, bed, kitchenette. That's all I need. And maybe a like a panic room built out of steel and like a gun locker. And have multiple ways of locking it and alarmed, uh, having it all alarmed. I'll put all my tackle in there. So that's the dream. You know, one of those lottery dreams is not to go buy a bigger boat and have a giant 50-foot sport fish. I wouldn't want that. I, I, I don't want that like I don't want the woo flu. I want a giant steel house garage all attached with concrete inside with it all pointing down to a drain and it drains out of off the property with chain link fence completely around it with goats inside. I love goats. My neighbor has goats down the, down the street right this way from my house. 
and they got little horns and everything and they're just so friendly i think goats are cool maybe throw a peacock in there because a peacock is your best ever uh what would you say guard dog because if they don't know you and they see something that they don't like they squawk like crazy because i had a friend years ago and his brother didn't even have a fenced yard and he had two giant peacocks walking around on his property and soon as you turn to go in his driveway, those peacocks went nuts. So that's all I want is goats to eat the weeds and the grass and peacocks to sound the alarm. I don't need no dogs. I don't want to have to put up with dogs. I want animals that can take care of themselves. So I'd have me two or three, maybe four goats. Let them walk around and just eat everything and they'd be fun to mess around with and have two peacocks to sound the alarm. Wow, you really got a master plan, don't you? That does sound pretty good. A steel building where you just hit the garage door and it opens. You drive your boat and your truck inside. A tackle room built out of like steel. Wow. Yeah, yes I would. I'd need a nice piece of property that can completely chain link and have that, you know, barbed wire that points over so nobody can climb over it. An electric gate in the front that I just hit a button and, you know, the gate would open and I just drive my truck and my boat inside. Problem is, I'll never find anything like that in Jacksonville. It'll probably end up being someplace else. And you never find anything like that on the water or where it could be zoned. There is a piece of property down the street that I could put it on, but it's on a creek. And I'm sure the guy wants major money for it. But that would be the ultimate goal. That was always my dream, to live basically with my boat and truck right under one building and have a simple apartment, just an efficiency. I don't need much. I'm only one guy with two or three or four goats and two peacocks. So what could a man ever ask for? Yeah, and some guys think just converting their garage like you have, they think that's a man cave. I mean, what you're talking about it's called a man palace. Yeah, you got that right. It's almost a man palace here because there is no women to have to put up with, right? And I'm not delegated to do just what I want in my garage, which I've made it pretty much a, you know, a man cave-ish kind of thing. I'll never be able to park a car up in there, that's for sure. I can't even get my other what I want is a 16 foot wide body John boat up in here without pulling this boat, without pulling the, the big boat out. And then I'd have to put the John boat in there. And as you can see, half the garage is, is for tools and equipment and storage. And the other side is just, you know, workshop type stuff. So I don't know what I do, but that is always something that's in the back of my head how I would love to have a steel building built. It's beautiful concrete inside with all my tools and things like that. And if I ever got really good, maybe I can cordon off a little corner and call it the welding room. Yeah, well, it's been really great. I'm glad I stopped by. I'm glad I caught you at home. I'm glad I stopped by because I wanted to see that, that Iowa beef stick. I wanted to take a little closer look at it. I can't wait to that video when you're actually out catching fish on it. Big Bull Red would be great on that brand new Daiwa beef stick. I mean, I want to see it bend. And I'm sure you got a lot of viewers who would like to see some bend on it too. Hopefully it'll calm up here pretty soon. You'll be able to get out there and put some whoop ass on them. Yeah, I hope so too. This week the forecast isn't very good, but I still have, I might be going out and I'll just won't be able to go to the jetties and I'm just going to have to hang in the river. I got to do some solo R&D, that's for sure. I am pining to do some solo R&D where it's just me being able to do anything I want. Hey man, thanks for stopping by at the Jetty Wolf Fish Camp. All right, Jetty Wolf, I'll check you out later. Wow, what a setup. For a fisherman, this guy's living the high life. I hope everything continues, you know, with this election and everything. 
I know that the charter fishing business is all based on the economy and how well everybody everybody's doing. So I hope he does okay. And you know, I really hope that it comes out that Trump's the winner because he really needs it. Kind of off camera, he told me how much he's, how well he's done through the coronavirus this week, uh, this summer, and uh, how well, you know, everything's gone despite the virus. And it's all because even during the coronavirus thing, the Wu flu, old Captain Dave is really looking forward to an, a great year coming up because of the fact that President Trump is gonna keep America great again for more years.